Welcome back everyone to another exciting year of free heat. Free heat. Well, it's free to me. I have done a few videos on my outdoor wood furnace and for a number of people have become very upset uh, that I call this free heat. They do things like point out the wood's not free, the chainsaw's not free, the electricity's not free. <laughs> I think they missed the first 45 seconds of my last video. What I talk about free heat is that each month when I walk down to the mailbox, there is not an envelope from the gas company. So to me, this is free heat. We keep our house as hot as we want and we have the hottest shower on this side of the Mississippi. All right, uh, that's what this thing does for us. It heats our house, it heats our domestic hot water keeps me in shape, but it also developed my hobby of firewood uh, because these things are very inefficient. They use a lot of firewood and that's where my hobby started. I still remember the first year I made my firewood for this. Um, I had my big pile, a big stack of it. It was all neatly stacked and the gentleman, Mr. Shadle, came to install this. I was all proud of my pile of wood. And I said, so, how do you like my pile of firewood? You know, you think it'll get me through the winter? And he just stood there with a grin and looked at me. <laughs> and wow, is he right, because these things use a lot. Our house is a little bit on the big side. We're about 50 feet from the house, so the hot water goes underground into a heat exchanger in our forced air furnace. Uh, but we go through about 10-ish, 10 to 12 cords a year, uh, just in the winter time. And this is my current pile of logs. And <laughs> you know the old saying, the mechanic always has the worst running car in town. The firewood professional has the ugliest looking woodshed in the world. And I certainly have that. It looks like my woodshed has barfed all of this wood out onto the ground. I start off with good intentions. I start stacking it real neat inside, but man, all it takes is just one time for me to come home and I just dump it onto the ground and that's the way it stays. This is probably not enough wood to get me through the season of heating our house. Uh, these logs on the outside of this shed will probably all be gone by early January. Um, now we've had a very warm winter so far and so this is the week of Thanksgiving and I have just fired up our furnace uh, today. So we have saved almost a month of heating our house because um, we have uh, space heaters that we use and a lot of us aren't home during the day. And these things can be a little finicky when it's um, warmer outside because they'll sit and smolder. And if the house isn't asking for heat, uh, these uh, it'll let the fire go out and that becomes a pain after a while. So I just let it sit until uh, the temperature starts to drop and we are getting to that this week. It's getting cold at night and uh, we have a new week coming in of um, 40 degree weather and I think that's pretty good for the hardy. All right, let me just give you a brief overview of what an outdoor furnace is and what it does and maybe we can talk about if it is right for you. There are all different makes and models of outdoor wood furnaces just like cars you know there's Fords and Chevys and Buicks this is a Hardy it is made in Mississippi and unfortunately Hardy's uh, aren't made anymore Hardy calls this a outside wood burning furnace and a lot of people got upset they keep saying that this is a boiler but it is not a pressurized boiler this is a, a non-pressurized hot water tank <laughs> so uh, this is the cooling stack so the this is a hundred gallon tank of water let me climb up here and I'll show it to you and this is a condenser stack right so the steam comes up in here and then it turns back into water and drips back in this is the water level right here you can see the top of it and it surrounds the firebox so this is a 100 gallon tank of water surrounding a firebox. And the firebox and the opening for it is on this side. Outdoor wood furnaces have a lot of different styles. Uh, some of them just have a natural draft. 
Mine has a forced air blower on it. And this is the ash door. You always want to open the ash door first. I've learned that the hard way. And this is the firebox. So the house is not asking for heat and the water temperature is up above at least 150 degrees. So the fire uh, just smolders. So these walls, yeah, it's nasty in there. These walls are the uh, tank and it goes around all sides of this furnace. If I leave these doors open, that fire is gonna kick back up, but then you run the risk of overheating the furnace. So I'll shut this door. We'll leave the bottom one open for right now. So let's go around the back. This is the control panel. And, oh, 50 year old, 50 year old knees, guys. So this is the back side of the furnace. This is where all the magic happens. So the Hardy is a analog era machine. There's nothing digital on this. There's nothing computerized. It's all parts that you can get from your local hardware store. So there are three systems that are working all at the same time on an outdoor wood furnace. So this is the water pump, and this is what is known in the OWB world as taco pumps. And wouldn't you just love to have a pump that pumps out tacos? But this is the pump that pumps the hot water from the Hardy, and it goes into the house underground through one of these PEX lines. That water goes through a heat exchanger which sits on top of my forced air furnace. And the thermostat inside the house will kick on the blower motor only of my forced air furnace in the house and the water pump. That pumps the hot water through the heat exchanger and then it comes back in and enters the hot water tank at the bottom. So this is the cooler water returning from the house going into the um, outdoor wood furnace. Your second system is the domestic hot water. So I have a T installed on the top of my domestic hot water tank in the basement and it takes the water from the main feed, it brings it out to the hardy, goes up into here and it goes through its own heat exchanger. Uh, it's a big coil of copper tubing and then it comes back out and then back into the house and then it fills up the hot water tank. And that's where we get our hot water for our showers. And guys, I'm telling you, we have the hottest shower <laughs> you can imagine. If there is any benefit from having an outdoor wood furnace, despite your savings on a gas bill, it is that shower it is awesome, man. And then the third, oh look, it just kicked on. So that is the blower motor. It is now kicked on because the water temperature which works on this aquastat, uh, got close to 150 degrees. So it kicked on the, oh, and now, <laughs> so now it's, the house is asking for heat. So the water, the taco pump just kicked on. And this, as I touch the bottom of it, it is hot, man. I can't keep my hand on it. So that is the temperature of the water, which is around 160 degrees right now going into the house. So when the house asks for heat, that draws heat away from the hardy and the temperature starts dropping on your water. The aquastat is set to kick on when it gets too low and that will kick on the blower motor. And the blower motor works off of this solenoid which pulls up the flap so it can suck air in and it blows it into the firebox. And this is just a service port on the firebox. All of that works from the aquastat and when the temperature gets up to 170 degrees, the Aquastat shuts this down. It'll close the flap and turn off the blower motor. So if we come around to the front, guys, we, oh, I'm gonna get down here, my, oh, my knees. You young guys and gals don't get old. So this is the underside. The wood is sitting on top of these grates. And if you look in the back, you see that hole, where is it, right there? That is the air coming through that uh, blower motor. So that rekindles the fire and it brings the water temperature. Oh, I'm trying to stand up. <laughs> that rekindles the fire and it gets the temperature back up. And once that water temperature hits 170, it shuts it off. 
So the one thing that I have to do whenever I'm out here filling this up before I go back in the house is make sure I have closed all my doors. Because if I don't, the fire is going to keep burning. It will overheat and boil over the boil over the furnace, which I've done in the past. Every problem that you can possibly make with an outdoor wood furnace, I have made it. So we're going to just let the hardy do its thing right now and I got some really nice dry firewood in there and you can hardly see any smoke coming out of the top of it. But that's what I'm saying about these things, guys. Um, you, <laughs> you can and people do burn everything and anything in these. And I mean, these things just belch smoke out the uh, smokestack. I mean, people have been known to throw their garbage in here. They've been known to throw in tires and asphalt and shingles. It's obviously not very neighbor friendly and honestly guys an outdoor wood furnace is not neighborly friendly I think if you're in a location where you got neighbors um, I don't know if these are the way to go uh, even here you know our neighbors are pretty far away but you know you think of the prevailing winds and when you're setting one of these up you try to set them in a place so that the prevailing winds is carrying the smoke out to an you know an area where no one's at but you know, you notice these things then when the when the wind's blowing in the winter time. I mean, this the wind blows from every direction and goes, and the wind will be taking the smoke straight to the neighbor's house. So I think you should pay attention to those kind of things because these are not neighborly, and that's why you mostly see these out in the country. You know, where uh, people don't they have a higher tolerance for that kind of stuff. Number one, but number two, there's less people around to become annoyed uh, by uh, by by smoke. I have had this in operation for I think this is now our 17th winter and guys every winter we have heated this house our gas bill is zero we have no gas bill we uh, heat exclusively with with wood I do have a small auxiliary propane tank on the side of the house but that's just there for emergency you know you never know what's going to happen uh, the one thing I've always worried about, because this does have a physical element to it, uh, I have to come out here twice, minimum twice a day, but I usually, when I'm home, I come out here all the time <laughs> because it's a lot of fun. I'll come out here and punch the wood down, uh, fill it up, you know, just to help it out, just to help it keep burning. But there is that physical element to it, and man, you know, you could get into an accident, break a leg or whatever, and you can't heat your house with your outdoor wood furnace. So I felt it was prudent to keep that propane on the side of the house just for that type of uh, possibility. Okay, when I say though, guys, and I'm just thinking, boy, that fire looks awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> um, you can see how inefficient it is, guys. You, the flame is going straight up the smokestack. A lot of these are built differently. I think they're all kind of inefficient, but this one is the most inefficient of them all. I think this is the king of inefficiency. All the other inefficient stoves in this world look up to the hardy. I uh, mean, I'm telling you, at night, you got flames just shooting straight up out of the, um, out of the smokestack. They use a lot of wood. But my plan was always to get free firewood, which I've learned is very easy to do, uh, especially through the summertime. And I just never worried about it. Wood that I got was usually bulldozed by a farmer and it was just plentiful. That's what got me started with my firewood hobby, which then became a business, which allows me to bring these kind of videos to you. I think outside of your, the type of neighborhood that you live in, boy, that looks cool. The other thing to keep in mind is if you are the type of person that goes on winter vacations, I don't think these are for you because they take constant attention. You're out here minimum two times a day and you just can't leave. And that has always been okay for us because, you know, we had the younger kids. We were always around school. We never went on ski trips or anything. So it worked out great for us. Uh, but if you are the type that go on vacations you just can't leave and shut these down remember these are filled up with water and then you're in the middle of the winter time and then you can't these can't freeze up because they'll break everything in it all of your water lines will break the tank the welds everything will break so keep that in mind if you're really interested in an outdoor wood furnace 
The other thing guys, the wood game is a constant grind and it is always part of your life. I really think that if you are buying your firewood, I don't think these things are worth it uh, because the prices of these have really gone up over the years. And when we bought this, we the Hardys were the cheapest that you could buy. I got this for $5,000. I installed it myself and it paid for itself midway through our third winter. But you know guys, it's just a constant thing with the wood. I think the first thing you got to realize is can you get the wood and can you keep it going and do you find it enjoyable because I sure did. I loved doing all this firewood. But maybe for you it isn't. And I'm saying if you have to buy your firewood, you know, maybe it would be better just to keep your money in the bank and pay the gas man. Because uh, the you got to have your return on investment with these. Um, if we're talking pure dollars and cents. But for me, guys, uh, beyond the dollars and cents, there is a benefit to your lifestyle by having one of these. We have the warmest house <laughs> that you can imagine. We keep, we have complete disregard for our thermostat. We keep our house as warm as we want. We have no concern for that gas bill coming in. And I think that is the freedom that I was looking for in um, when we installed this thing. Before this, you know, we're not on the gas line out here. I mean, we froze to death because we couldn't afford the propane. We were making the kids do jumping jacks to stay warm and uh, enter this thing here and everything has changed. These uh, PEX lines go underground into the house. Uh, they're buried three feet in the ground. They're encased in insulation. They're okay, so that just shut off. The temperature is now up to 170 degrees and the aquastat turned off the blower motor and now it's just going to choke down the fire but it's not because we left the door open so let's close this door and then this fire is going to go out okay so the door is closed so that fire is going to choke down and then we'll see some smoke start wisping out of the top which is the other thing that I've learned that I did right with this installation is you want to have these within eye shot of your house. You want to be able to see it uh, while you're inside because you know these things can burn out or they could overheat and you'll learn that the smoke stack tells you what's going on with your furnace. When I see this smoke, this wisping kind of smoke coming out of here, I know that all systems are normal and everything is good. Probably the biggest mistake that I made with my installation was I didn't put my furnace to where I can get my truck um, 12 months out of the year. <laughs> because people know, uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know how soupy my yard gets. So if, if times get bad or if the snow's deep, uh, my wood pile is static. It's not going to change. You know, I'm never going to be adding to it because I can't get over here unless I'm wheelbarrowing stuff and we know how much fun that is. So I think in a perfect world, you wanna have this installed to where you have a good road that you can get up with a truck, uh, you know, that you can get it plowed in the winter and get up to it uh, so that you can get your wood dumped because uh, especially when you first start off, you don't have a clue on how much wood these things are gonna eat. And this is nothing like a fireplace kind of wood consumption. This is on an all different level, guys. I will have that firebox on a cold winter night. I'll have this firebox stuffed so full of wood and I'll come back out in the morning and it is all gone. <laughs> That's how hungry these things are. When you see an outdoor wood furnace doing that, that means everything's working great. So that tells me right now that our temperature is up, that uh, the blower motor has kicked off, the wood is just smoldering inside. I can hear the water pump running right now, so that means the house is calling for heat. Let me see here. There you can hear the taco pump running, and man, it is on fire down here. I can't keep my hand on it. And then once that um, temperature drops on the water, then it starts all over again. The aquastat opens the flap, the blower motor kicks on, and that'll keep going. Okay, guys. So I just wanted to show you the Hardy uh, outdoor wood furnace. What a great machine. And it's just been a part of our life ever since we've lived here. And really, you know, the 
filling this thing with wood and keeping it happy through the winter time has led to where I am right now with Ohio wood burner. So I'm going to try and bring you some more videos in the winter time and just show you about a day in the life of owning an outdoor wood boiler. Uh, they're not for everyone, but if they're for you, you're going to love it. All right, guys, I hope everyone has a great day.